This video is intended to give an introduction to the Inventor integration for DDM. It will cover creating a part record, adding it to an assembly, creating a drawing and then releasing the drawing and assembly. Then finally it will cover making a change to the assembly and then up issuing the changes. So currently we're logged into DDM. We're going to close this window to return to Inventor where we're in the process of completing a design. Just to complete this we're going to add a chamfer on each, each end of this part, um, one millimetre. And now we're ready to save this part back to DDM. So in the Inventor environment we have a PDM ribbon bar that gives us all of the commands that we need to use uh, to work with DDM and Inventor. In this case we're going to use the save function to save this part back to DDM. And so when we press on this button the part properties window opens allowing us to assign a part number and description to this new item that we've created. If I click on this button it will open DDM's configurable part numbering system and I can select from some predefined rules. So in this case I'm selecting a manufactured component. We'll give the item a description and you'll see as the part is stored the number will be assigned. So with the properties filled in I can click on OK and at the top here we can see that the part number is now assigned to this new part that we've created um, in DDM. If we close this window and return to DDM at the top of my list of recent items is the new wrist pin that we've created. It's at a work in progress state and if we look at the properties of it then here we can modify any of the attributes but we can also see the physical properties of this including the material, um, the mass etc. We've also got an indication of who created it and when it was created. So now that this design is complete or this component is complete we're going to assemble it into our piston head assembly. So if I load that into session Then again from the PDM ribbon we're going to select a load subpart and we'll go back to DDM to find the wrist pin to load into the assembly. Now using standard inventor constraints we can put this component into our assembly. And now with the component uh, assembled we can store our assembly back to DDM. So from the ribbon we'll select to save. And now we've got conf confirmation down here that our assembly has been stored successfully back to DDM. We'll complete this now by creating a drawing. So we're going to create a new drawing using one of the templates and we'll put down a base view. For the purposes of this demonstration I'm not going to annotate this drawing so we can store it back to DDM again from the PDM ribbon in exactly the same way we click on save and our drawing properties window opens. It's prompting with the same um, part number as the, the model that this drawing has been created from. If we need to change that we can. In this case I'm going to keep it the same and the description has also populated from the model. So we can click on OK to create our drawing. And as the drawing is created you'll see that the drawing title block is automatically populated for me. So let's close these from session, return to DDM and now we can see that we've got the drawing, the assembly and the wrist pin component that we made. We can also start to understand the relationships of these items so if we structure in here we can see the components that go to make up this assembly. We can also see from the relations if there is an attached drawing and at the top here we have the drawing and we can explore the relationships in exactly the same way. Every time we create and store a drawing a PDF preview is created so that people without Inventor can go and look at the drawing just as a PDF preview. 
In this case we can see that the drawing is watermarked and this is a configurable option in DDM. So this is indicating that this is a work in progress drawing and that it shouldn't be used for production. Now that my assembly is complete, I'm going to change the state, so I'm going to release the assembly. And we can do this either from the drawing or the assembly by right-clicking and selecting to change the state. Now it's important to expand all so that we can see any other relationships below this top level. And now I can see that the piston head has an associated drawing, but these are currently released. So I only need to select the items that are work in progress and I'm going to add some comments and notes against this release. So this is first release for production and we will set the state to released. Click on OK and we can see that my assembly uh, is now released. So we're now going to make a, a change to this assembly to, to see how we reflect those changes through an up issue process. So if I load the assembly into session and what we're actually going to do is to modify the wrist pin again. So I will open that into its own window. Now one of the important things before making a change is to understand the impact of that change. If I look at the properties of this item then from the properties, the DDM properties card, I can take a look and see where this is used. So I know in this case this is only used in the parent assembly so I can go ahead and make the change that I want to make. In this case I'm going to put a hole through the item. So with the modification made remember if we look at the properties of this this is a release part and so I can't save this back to DDM. If I try to save back I get an indication that this is modified but I'm unable to save it. So in this case I'm going to use the save as function to create a copy of this part. Now if there were related drawings they would also be pulled into session and updated along with the changes to this item. So we're going to give this a new number. And we'll add to the description so that we know that this is a different item. Click on OK and the part is updated and stored. If I return to the assembly we can see that this item is now used in the assembly as well. Now we need to update the assembly drawing so if I come back to the PDM ribbon I can say re retrieve the related drawing and that will pull the drawing into session and it will update it with the modified wrist pin. So we'll come back to the PDM ribbon and this time we're going to use the save new issue function. So if I select here, here's my assembly. We're going to select the assembly and the assembly drawing, move them to the next issue and we can also fill out a change reason. So if we have uh, change numbers associated with our uh, changes we can populate this here and in here we can uh, indicate the change. So if we click on OK we can complete our changes by clicking on OK here. And our drawing will update and you'll see that our revision history also updates with the changes that we've, we, that we've set against this item. So we've now got the new issue in session. We can close this window, close this window. We'll close the new wrist pin as well and return to DDM. Now we can see the new issue of the assembly and the new wrist pin component all at a work in progress state and you'll see that the original issue of the assembly is now marked as under review giving a clear indication to, to users that this previously released assembly is being modified. So I'm going to make one further change to this assembly and we're going to do some work on the DDM bill of materials for this assembly. To do that I can right click and select to open the bill of materials editor and there's various things that I can do in this window. So first of all this is showing us the components used in the assembly with the quantity of each component. So we have two compression rings and one oil ring. We can, if we like, remove things because sometimes we may model things that we don't want on our bill of materials and in this case we can select to hide them 
we might want to reorder the bill of materials and we can select to auto number the bill of materials in this way. What I want to do in this case is to add uh, something to the bill of materials that we've not modeled in the inventor environment. In this case it's going to be uh, a lubricant. So I'm going to minimize this window to go and find the item that I want. And I'm going to use my category browser to look at the adopted lubricants that we already have in the database. So here's a, a list of various lubricants and what we've also got against these is we've got a, a related document which in this case is the data sheet for this lubricant so I can check the properties of it. Once I've found the lubricant that I want to use I can right click copy reference or I could use a control C shortcut, reopen the bill of materials and control V or right click paste the new item into the bill of materials. So we'll add an index number to this. Because this hasn't been modeled in CAD we don't have a quantity so we have to add a quantity here um, and this is measured in milliliters so 10 milliliters and we've got space for notes as well. So if I apply that my bill of materials is complete and there's various options to publish this. We can print it as a report, we can save it out to a CSV file. So I will close this window and now my changes are complete. If I return to my recent items what I'm going to do is to release the new issue of the assembly. So same process as before, we'll select to change the state, we'll expand all so that we can see everything that's affected um, and now we will set the state of these items, in this case to released and we can click on OK. So with our new items released you'll see that the old items are now marked as superseded. In addition if we look at a preview of the drawing because this is released the watermark is updated to indicate that this is um, released, it's been signed off and approved for use. Final thing I want to just take a look at again is the bill of materials. So if we open the bill of materials editor for this item we've got an option here to do a, uh, a bill of materials comparison against the earlier issue of the assembly and this now shows me what's changed within this assembly. So we've got some new items added and we've got some items removed. So this video gave an overview of the inventor integration for DDM showing how to create parts, drawings and assemblies. It also showed us how to release information, edit bills of materials and then up issue any changes to modified models and drawings.